Hey everyone, TTT here. Let's get the next lesson in and maybe we'll actually get a dungeon this time. Lesson 25. And this time there's seven of them. I guess this time the topic is family. Oh yeah. Parent or intimacy, intimacy. Oya or Shita for Konyomi and Shin for Onyomi. Written with uh, 16 strokes. Hmm? I think they made a little mistake there. They put in the kanji for Asa morning instead of for parent there. But wait, the shape is made from three kanji. Ta, stand, ki, tui, and migu, si. Putting these together, we say parents stand in trees to oversee their kids. Ha ha. Mother. Ha ha for Konyomi and Bo for Onyomi, written with five strokes. The shape of haha -ha resembles an antique dresser. This in, is an abstract mnemonic, but you can remember it as a family antique your mother passes on to you. You know, it was these mnemonics were abstract from the very beginning, but oh well. Father, Chi Chi for Konomi and Fu for Onyomi, written with four strokes. You can imagine the shape of Chi Chi as a pair of tools. Use the saying, My father always has his work tools in hand. Ane. Elder sister. Ane for Konyomi and Chi for Onyomi, written with 8 strokes. The shape of Ane contains the kanji Onna for female as well as Ichi for market. Used to saying my elder sister works at the market. Imouto. Younger sister, Imoto for Konyomi and Mai for Onyomi, written with 8 strokes. The shape of Imoto contains the kanji Onna for female, and the white side looks like a tree, used to saying my younger sister loves to climb trees. Now we get the brothers. Ani. Elder brother. Ani for Konyomi and Ki or Kyo for Onyomi, written with five strokes. The shape of Ani contains the kanji Kuchi for mouth. Say my elder brother has a big mouth and long legs. Otouto. A younger brother. Ototo for Konyomi and T Dai or De for Onyomi, written with seven strokes. The shape of Ototo looks like a cute dinosaur costume with horns and a tail. Say my younger brother likes to dress up as a dinosaur. And that should have been the last one. Indeed. Now the quiz. And we'll see what happens after that. English meaning of Chichi, father. Kunyomi reading of parents, Oya, Oshita. Onyomi reading of little sister, Mai. 
English meaning of Ototo, the younger brother. Kanji for mother. Aha. Uh -huh. Onyomi of elder sister. Uh, the Onyomi. I think that was she. Yes. And that's the quiz. Everyone, please gather around. Sure, you're up early. As always, I figured out what we can do to stop the Obake. For real? Wow, dude, are you bluffing? Give him a break, Frederick. Do you think she was want to lie about something like this? Nah, I guess not. Shiro, please tell us what you've got. Okay, listen carefully. You've all given me some valuable information in the time we've been together. You've told me that most of Japan was transported to the Obake world. At first, I doubled this possibility. But then we were attacked by that monk, Masakuni. He was ready to transport our entire village to the Obake world. Now I've figured out how, how he can do it. i figured out why everything in Japan just vanished. Go on. The answers lie in the shrines littered around the country, and they still stand. Shrines from every city, and the shrine from my childhood, they are still intact. Everyone in our group is only here today because we were inside shrines at a specific time when everything disappeared. If you remember, I mentioned the possibility that Obake were created by a brotherhood of monks many centuries ago. What if these very same monks built the shrines all around Japan? What if every shrine was placed in a specific position to channel power to another world? By chanting prayers, magic words, at each shrine around the country, a great deal of power could be summoned. Enough power to lift up and transport people and objects to another world. But these prayers would all have to be offered up at the same time. Hundreds, maybe thousands of prayers spoken at the same time across the entire country. How is such a thing possible? The answer to that hit me just this morning. Every single one of us here made a prayer in a shrine, just as cities vanished from beneath us. All across the country, the people of Japan were offering prayers, and in that instant, everything changed. You are lured to the shrines by a wandering monk, but you remember, everyone witnessed the same monk, apparently at the same time. We saw Masakuni on that fateful day. Yes, Masakuni. Or at the very least, you saw an Obake disguised as Masakuni. Everybody across the country met the same monk at the same time. The Obake are shapeshifters, and if they're working with the real Masakuni, it wouldn't be out of the question that they could adopt his form. By taking the form of a human, a worldly, peaceful monk, the Obake were able to convince people all over the country to offer up their prayers. These prayers embodied the hopes and dreams of the people. Such wishes are powerful catalysts in ancient magic. By adding their own alien desires to the prayers, the Obaka turns the people's own wishes into a quest for a horrific catastrophe. And within seconds, Japan as we knew it disappeared, vanished. Everything was transported to the Obaka world, leaving this country wide for the Obaka to fully invade. I see. Shiro, are you sure about this theory? I am. It may be rough around the edges, but I believe everything I've mentioned is possible. So, to ask one last question, what can we do about it? You mentioned that the monk Amane advised you to make another prayer at the shrine. When doing so, you found yourself in the Obaku world. Yes, that's true. And you mentioned that you were able to return to this world by way of an identical shrine in the Obaku world. Yes. And therefore, my belief is that, the, is that the shrines in Japan all correspond to an identical shrine in the Obaku world. Think of the Obaku world as the mirror image of our own. We need to go there and offer up our sincerest prayers at every shrine. By doing so, we should be able to reverse the spell that the Obaku cast. If we're lucky, everything will be returned back to Japan. It seems like a gamble. What if there are no other shrines in the Obake world? If my understanding of Obake magic is correct, each shrine must have a counterpart in the Obake world. 
Without it, the prayers offered in Japan would fizzle out and have no effect. Sure, this is a very risky plan. Your theory is not bulletproof. I can think of a dozen ways you could be wrong. I know that. So I'm in. You know me well. I don't need a flawless plan. You can count on me. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. I don't know about this. What if we can't get back to Japan? What if we're trapped in the Overco world forever? Well, we made it back once, right? Getting back should be easy. And it's luck that there's much reason to stay here. We're constantly in danger anyway. How is traveling to the Overco world any different? I... I suppose... I think we need to trust Shiro. A theory is not without merit. Thank you. Ultimately, it is up to all of you whether you want to accompany us. I won't force any of you. But if you do decide to join, please know that this will be our most dangerous mission yet. Hana-sensei, perhaps we can prepare a little before we depart for the Obaka world. Yeah, I'd feel a lot more confident about this if we have some more training first. The kids offer some good points, Hana. I have to agree with them. Okay, that's no problem. We'll take some time to prepare. A good old-fashioned dungeon crawl would be a good way to boost our experience. Maybe we can even level up. A dungeon crawl? What are you suggesting, Frederick? Let's go train on the mountain nearby. There are sure to be Obake crawling all over. Hmm, not a bad idea. Okay, we'll do as Frederick suggests. Uh, really? It's a solid idea. Onward. And onward we go. But still, that was a fairly long scene. Sheesh. Let's see, where are we going? Dark Mountain, Kuraiyama. And there's two new side quests. But since this episode is already fairly long as it is, I'm just gonna go here without doing the side quests. We can do those in the next episode. Saihitsu Brush. I'm not actually sure what that is. Saihitsu. A super fine calligraphy brush. Ah, okay. at the very top. Okay, first off we have Mava, haha. And then Fuyu, Winter. Body, Karada. Up there. Hey. And M Park. Uh, that is. M. Still, we're getting a lot, lot of countries again. The skill warden window is getting pretty cluttered. Hey, Kenko Sean. Let's see. Actually, let's equip the Enmusubi charm for the increased affection level growth. That's more important than the other stuff. Oh, I can't actually go here. Invisible war. is Park M Sono Next 
next is Imoto, little sister. Imoto. Yoru, knight. Yo. Haha, <laughs> mother. Haha. <laughs> and Koi, voice. Say. That's the boss. Let's do it. Ultra Apocalypse. Well, that was a somewhat ex exaggerated name. Okay. Ani, older brother. Kyo. Where did we have that one? I think K or more. I don't see either of those right now though. What else do we have? Boom, minute. That was somewhere. That is Emoto, little sister. My father, Chichi. That one. Don't tell me. I, hmm. I'm not really finding that. Ah, up there. Didn't think it was that far up. G. All right. Your weekday. It was fairly far down, I believe. Uh, there. Yo. Haha, <laughs> mother. Bo. And now we have once have again have to find that one. Uh. Ah, there it is. More. Right, there we go. That took a little while, but we're done with it. The boss has been defeated. Time to return home. Right, and that's it for this time. See you guys next time. Until then, bye bye.